I'm Dr Ellie Ledbeater and I work in the School of Biological Sciences. Um, most of my research is about um, the insect brain, uh, how it works and how insects solve the problems that they encounter when they're, when they're interacting with the environment. So um, everything that we work on is to do with behaviour and our models are um, bees and wasps uh, which are highly social and that's the reason that we use them because they're really um, complicated societies um, but we can uh, study the really simple components of them. Um, so we're interested in things like how uh, social behaviour evolves um, how the brain changes when animals become social, but we also do some more applied work on how um, uh, how bee populations are changing um, in the current environment because pollinators are declining across the world. I came to study bees um, entirely by accident because um, I wanted to do a PhD with a particular supervisor and he happened to work on bees. I found his work really interesting so I ended up working on bees. I'm really glad I did because they turned out to be the perfect model for what I want to do. Um, so I'm interested in social cognition, interested in what has to evolve um, to allow animals to interact with each other. But that's quite a hard thing to do in something like a primate or um, a bird, for example, because it's really hard to um, study whole societies in a natural context. For birds, for example, you have to go out into the woods, um, tag everybody, the generations are, uh, last a long time, so you can't see um, evolution in action. Uh, with social insects, it's really different. You can have the whole society in an observation hive in the lab, so that's part of the reason why we study them. So our new grant, um, which I'm really excited about, is going to be looking at um, why intelligence evolves. Um, and by intelligence I mean cognitive traits such as learning and memory. So you'd think that, uh, that learning, or the ability to learn, would be universally helpful, yeah? um, because it allows animals to adapt to their environment. But in fact, um, that raises the question of why hasn't everything evolved to be clever? Uh, and that's what we're, there must be some sort of trade-off, um, perhaps in terms of the amount of, uh, of uh, energy you have to devote to learning, etc., um, that prevents learning evolving in, in, uh, universally. So um, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to measure learning abilities in the lab, in bees, um, which is something that you can really, um, that bees are really great for, because you can keep them in the lab, but then you can release them into the wild, um, and test how well they do. So we're going to be testing whether the ones that are really good at learning in the lab, on our lab-based assays, um, see if those are actually the ones that do best when you release them into the wild and they have to bring back nectar and pollen for the colony. In the next few years, what I think we really want to achieve is, a, um, first of all, a fuller understanding of um, how bees are doing in the different environments that we see around the UK, especially the urban environment. Um, so that's from the conservation perspective. Uh, <clears throat> from the perspective of cognition, what we'd really like to do is build a big research team who can really study the honeybee and the honeybee dance, which is an amazing communication system, um, in more detail than we already have. So answer some of the outstanding questions about how it is that bees actually understand uh, their dances, because it's quite an amazing thing um, that they can do that. Uh, so that's where we want to go in the next few years.